Well, good morning, everyone. It's Natalie Ashdown here with you and welcome to our last coaching cafe for 2019. I can't believe it. Everyone I'm speaking to at the moment has said that this year has gone so quickly. And uh, I, I feel the same way. I feel like it was just yesterday that we ran our to top 10 highlights for 2018. So it's lovely to see you all coming on the line. Uh, this webinar is, as I mentioned, the top 10 highlights that we've seen throughout the coaching cafes in 2019. Um, I've chosen my top 10, but I'd be super keen to hear your thoughts as well. So as always, um, please feel free to pop a message into the chat box, pop your comments in there, and I'll pick them up as we go along. So it's Natalie Ashdown here with you. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your highlights as we go along. So I'm presenting the highlights today just uh, for, from the past six months, actually, the last six months coaching cafes. Do you know we've actually, through the coaching cafes, issued over 220 ICF continuing coach education units, which is wonderful. Um, we are offering these uh, webinars complimentary as a way of creating a community, uh, sharing our learned experience, providing you know, thought-provoking conversations and adding value. And it's so nice to see that so many people have taken advantage of that um, offer as well. And it's part of how we want to give back to the coaching community and the industry. So we're quite excited. There's a few stats um, there to offer you as we go along. So the top 10 highlights, uh, hopefully you can see my uh, slides tabbing forward. So many to choose from. Um, people will know me that I often make references to ABBA. And so I, I did think that uh, choosing my top 10 highlights was like trying to pick my favorite ABBA song. There is so many to choose from. So I've, I've done my best actually to, um, to, to find the ones that uh, were the most meaningful. And the way I chose the highlights for this year was based on the the conversations we had during the actual coaching cafe so the 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 coaching cafes that really inspired me inspired our conversations really provides provided some thought-provoking ideas during the conversations the other way that I chose the top 10 highlights were our most highly attended coaching cafes throughout the year as well so there'll be a couple of extra ones in there for you to um to see as well so I think uh, we'll start with the powerful questions and our analogy to cheesecake. So a number of you on the line I can see attended our, our webinar, which was around question deconstruction. And we said, what's cheesecake got to do with, with powerful questions? And if you remember what, what we were talking about there was actually thinking about what are our stock questions that we ask as coaches? And how can we move those questions to be more powerful? How can we deconstruct those questions to be more powerful? And we had a lot of fun and we had a lot of discussions about that. By the way, um, for those of you that are part of the Open Door alumni, you can pick up any of these webinars if you missed them. They're on our Facebook, the Open Door Coaching Network Facebook for alumni. Um, a number of the webinars are also now part, um, part of our blog posts as well, so you can pick them up if you missed them. But we had a lot of fun actually deconstructing questions and thinking about well how do we actually make our questions more powerful how do we move our questions from ACC level to PCC level and how do we make our questions more MCC level as well I think the next uh, most highly attended webinar and the one that was very thought-provoking was uh, so number nine on our list was the value of R we basically took another look at the good old smart model which was actually introduced into our literature and into the management literature many years ago now, like, you know, back in 1985, something like that. And today in coach training programs, people still include the SMART model and we still include the SMART model because it's still a highly effective way of setting goals. There's a number of different words that the, the SMART could stand for. So, for example, the A could stand for achieved or articulated or actionable. But ultimately, in its essence, the SMART model basically says that if we have these elements to our goals, they're more likely to be achieved. And we took a look in particular at the R in SMART. And you might remember that this was because I had a reaction when a coach asked me, uh, well, how realistic is that? And I remember answering the question. So I was talking about a goal I was trying to achieve and the coach asked me, how realistic is that? 
And I remember saying something on the lines of, well, you know what, when I'm setting big goals, I never let realistic get in the way. <laughs> I never let realism get in the way of setting a big goal. And the coach actually challenged me to actually think about the goal from a realistic point of view. And that's when I started to do some research on what does it mean for our goals to be realistic? Uh, in one sense, it means that they're accurate. And in another sense, it means that they're true to life. So true to ourselves. Uh, they're goals where we're bringing our best. The, the way that I was thinking then of asking questions about this to make the goal more realistic is how can you bring that best self to the goal? Uh, what does realistic allow you? And how does realistic allow you to bring your best self to the goal? So there's a lot of different questions we can ask around realistic. And we did have a bit of a play with asking more powerful questions than just how is that realistic or how realistic is that for you? So it's uh, realistic was around stating uh, facts. Um, it doesn't mean uh, that it's, that it's, uh, it means that it's accurate, that, that what we're setting our goals around is accurate. And accurate doesn't mean that we need to be limiting ourselves. It means that we're thinking things through. And I really enjoyed our discussion around that, that when we're asking that question of our clients, we're, we're asking them to think things through and think about how true to life is that for you. So some really interesting questions we generated out of the good old R and SMART. So number eight, uh, the most, uh, one of the most highly attended coaching cafes throughout the year was when Bridget came on the line and talked about uh, the uh, coaching demonstrations and coaching and what, what we need to hear in coaching demonstrations and what good coaching sounds like from the eyes of the assessor. So Bridget, as you know, our learning and development manager has, has assessed hundreds and hundreds of, of coaching demonstrations through the, uh, through the coaching programs that we run. And she's always thinking about those coaching demonstrations from an ACC level or a PCC level and in line with the ACTP, the accredited coach training program guidelines that we have. So Bridget provided a lot of really interesting insights about what she's looking for at the different levels. It was really, really well attended. She got lots and lots of questions, which was a bit of a challenge for technology for Bridge, but she did, she did really well. So we enjoyed that, um, that session as well. Number seven, when we uh, were talking about the coaching culture framework. Now, some of you may remember we actually introduced the coaching culture framework, the, re, the revamped coaching culture framework at the end of last year. I can't believe it. It was one of our highlights of last year. And the coaching um, the framework, we, we re reconstructed it to make sure that we were clear that coaching is an enabler. So coaching and coaching programs and individual coaching and coaching 101 programs and feedback and evaluations, they all enable workforce strategy. They, all, all the things that we do as coaches uh, is enabling uh, the strategy of the organisation, the organisation's values and visions and the workforce strategy. So when we revisited this again this year in the Coaching Cafe, that was a really uh, well-received webinar and we had some really great discussions around that. So we find actually that using this framework now helps us really distinguish between coaching as an enabler of workforce strategy as opposed to saying, well, you know, coaching is the thing. It, it's it, Coaching is the tool set that we actually use to enable the workforce strategy. So there was a great conversation we had around that as well. Feel free to jump in and let me know. There's lots of people on the line. So feel free to jump in and let me know if you think these are resonating with you as well. So number six, this, these two, six and five, five, number six and number five are related of our highlights for 2019 are related to the webinars we ran for Coaching for Performance Conversations. Uh, one slightly outranked the other, but this was a really, really significantly highly attended <laughs> webinar. And the first webinar we presented was very highly attended because we were talking about underperformance. And one of the major ideas we provided in this webinar is the reframing that we can do with managers, the reframing we can do with leaders, the reframing we can do with HR people 
and, and team leaders when they talk about underperformers. So what they will say is, you know, when we're in a coaching conversation, they might say something like, well, what do I do with my underperformer? Or I've got a person who's underperforming or let's discuss your underperformance. So it, there's a lot of references to underperformers and that's how we refer to people in the workplace as underperformers. So what we were suggesting in the first part of the performance conversation webinars that we had, we ran a three part series, if you remember, uh, what we were suggesting is a big change of mindset here, coaching people for a change of mindset to, to, to swap out the words underperformers and to swap this for change, shift, lift, raise, any of those kind of words, change, shift, lift, raise, performance. And so when you swap out the word under for change, shift, lift, raise, the question becomes a lot more powerful and it also becomes more in line with actually what we want. So what do you do with people who need to change, shift or lift their performance? Um, I have a person who needs to change their performance. I have a person who needs to raise their performance. So when we're using these words, they're much more empowering and they actually do state, we want the person to shift their performance or lift their performance. How do we coach people to do that? Uh, and this webinar really, really resonated with people. We've had a lot of feedback that people are taking this back into the workplace and really, really focusing on the language we're using. If we keep referring to people as underperformers, then they're going to raise to our level of expectation. <laughs> Of course, if our expectation is that they're going to be underperforming, then they're not going to be disappointing us. They will be underperforming. So a lot of mindset change there that we really focused on. Number five uh, in our top 10 highlights, we introduced the performance coaching conversation. And this is basically a revamp of another model that we have in our certificate for in workplace and business coaching program. Uh, we're going to be introducing this a lot more into the programs that we do uh, in, in, the, in the new year. And the reason for that is because this was a really, really highly attended workshop. We really do find that people need some sort of framework, some sort of way of having this conversation, um, particularly if they're difficult conversations, but, but just generally, how do we just do performance conversations better? So we introduced the, this model, which we've been using for quite some time. Um, I've actually been able to sit down with my team over the past two weeks and have our, our end of year conversations. And this is what we've been talking about. What is it we're particularly proud of? What do we feel that we've achieved? Uh, how, what do we need to celebrate? Where have we experienced challenges or where have you experienced challenges this year and what's been the impact of the challenge? And then what I've been able to do with my team is talk about how we overcame those challenges throughout the year and what we're particularly proud of in that regards as well. You can talk to people about what they can focus on for continuous improvement. So we've talked about the challenges, but let's talk about where we can focus for continuous improvement. So it's not, you know, what have you done wrong and, and how's it all bad? It's about where did you experience challenges and what do we need to focus on now if we're looking at continuous improvement? So it might not be just be the challenge hours, uh, challenging areas. It's, it's across all areas that we're working on. Where can we actually do continuous improvement? And then, of course, finishing it off from a coaching point of view, we'd be looking at what steps can we take to move forward. So I'm just presenting that to you again, uh, the performance coaching conversation. If you are keen to find out more, if you missed this webinar in particular, as I said, it was one of the most highly attended webinars. There were so many people that came on the line. It was wonderful to see. And this webinar is also part of our blog post on our website, so you can find it uh, there as well. Just pausing, so we're halfway through our top 10 highlights of the Coaching Cafes for 2019. Uh, the next one is, is, is actually one that you all on the line, um, you didn't attend this one, but one of the highlights for me and one of the most highly attended webinars that, that we had was when I actually presented to the ICF, the International Coach Federation in Russia. So this um, presentation was done over Zoom, just like we're doing now. 
uh, all of my slides, I was presenting on um, implementing a coaching culture. Uh, all of my slides were translated into Russian. Um, and if you can see there, the Zoom chat webinar, obviously it's, it's, it's all in Russian. So uh, I was working with a really absolutely lovely lady and who was translating. So she's a coach, Kesnia was a coach. And as I was uh, talking, uh, she was translating as we go along. Uh, all the questions came through in Russian and she had to translate those questions for me. And then I, then I responded. It was such a great, interesting experience because I have worked with interpreters in the past, but I've never, uh, uh, this, is, this was the second uh, webinar I presented during the year to the International Coach Federation in Russia. And it was such a great experience because, of course, I have to slow down. I have to think about my words. I have to think about how those words translate into Russian and if they have meaning in another language from across the world. So a really good uh, experience for me, actually, to really think about the choice of words. When I'm talking to you guys I can, and, and girls on the, and everyone on the line, I can just, um, you know, grab it on, I suppose. <laughs> well, I try not to. But... But when I'm actually talking so that I need to be translated, it's a different, a different way of thinking. So that was a bit of a highlight for me as well. A coaching cafe not attended by you on the line, but a coaching cafe attended by a lot of people from uh, the International Coach Federation in Russia. So as I've always mentioned, feel free to jump in and, and let me know your thoughts or... Uh, any highlights that are coming up for you. I'd be really keen to hear what your highlights were uh, in your coaching through the year as well. So the third most highly attended webinar was the one we ran just recently. It is on, the, uh, on our blog post if you missed the webinar on the refresh of the International Coach Federation core competencies. So the International Coach Federation, I think they announced on the 14th of November around that date that, that the core competencies had uh, been completely reviewed. They... they ran uh, several workshops in order to come up with the re review of the core competencies. There was, I think, something like over 3,000 surveys completed around the ICF core competencies. And then they did the big announcement. Uh, two, two years research they did in order to come up with the ICF core competencies. It was quite significant, actually, this announcement because the ICF has not actually announced changes like this to the core competency in over 20 years. So it's been over 20 years since they actually announced the core competencies. And this was a very, very significant revision. Uh, what was interesting was that there's a much stronger emphasis on ethics. There's a strong emphasis not just on, uh, there's a strong emphasis on the coaching mindset. What this was about is not just doing coaching, that we're doing coaching and doing coaching models and using coaching models, but it's about how we're being as a coach. And I really liked to see that in the ICF core competencies because we reflect that in our, AC to, in our, in our coaching programs already. Uh, in our coaching cultural framework, we have the coaching principles in the middle at the heart of the coaching cultural framework. And so when they brought through the coaching mindset uh, and made that clearer in the ICF core competency stuff, it was a great thing to see. Um, there's a big strong emphasis on reflective practice and that as coaches we do continuing development. And of course, I really believe that the Open Door alumni and you know all of you that have joined us um, throughout the sessions, throughout the year on the coaching cafes, that's what we're really about is our continuing development. So a big tick on that core competency for all of us as well. I actually find that the language now is more relatable from a workplace coaching point of view. So the, the workplace coaching is not actually, uh, like it's not specifically mentioned in the ICF core competencies, but it feels like the language reads to me to be more aligned. The language I found is more streamlined and less jarring. So what I mean by that is um, one of the core competencies used to 
uh, say something along the lines of build um, intimacy with the client. And, it, and they've, so they've chopped out words like intimacy. Uh, intimacy has different meanings, uh, it, you know, in the English language, but the, uh, intimacy has different meanings across countries as well. So they were talking about that the coaching relationship is an intimate relationship. And, and of course that has different meanings. So there's, there's words that I always found quite jarring, which they have actually chopped out of the core competencies, which is, which is great to see as well. Uh, they have uh, specifically mentioned the role of stakeholders in the core competency now, which is more aligned with what we do with workplace coaching. Uh, they've also mentioned and made acknowledgement that that goals can be set at the organisational level, they can be set at the program level for an individual, and they can be set at a coaching session level as well. So it's acknowledging that, that there's different levels of goals that are set, and that every time we, we, we come to a coaching conversation, that a goal is actually set for that conversation. Previously, it was really just talking about establishing the agreement from a coaching session point of view, and not establishing the agreement from a, from a program point of view. So that was very interesting. Uh, and 11 competencies down to eight. So I did a full webinar on this. If you're keen, you can pick it up from our blog post. And, you know, as professional coaches, this is the ICF core competencies that we are subscribing to. So uh, it's good to be really across it. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Susie, Susie asks, uh, what's Open Door doing? Yes, so as an accredited coach training program, um, our our, our programs, the certificate for and the diploma, are uh, aligned with the core competencies. Uh, we don't really have much work to do. We've been through them and we can see that we're pretty well aligned now. So coach training programs have one, uh, we've got till 2021 actually to introduce the alignment, um, but we are pretty well ready to go. So with any materials we produce from from the beginning of next year, we will be aligned. So we're pretty excited by that. It's pretty well one full year ahead of time. But as they did say, the ICF core competencies are reflecting current practice. So they would have been pretty surprised if, if, if programs weren't already aligned because it's supposed to be reflecting current practice. So that was an interesting, uh, interesting thing that they talked about. Alrighty, so feel free to jump in if you've got any thoughts as well. So number two, uh, our second, uh, uh, this was uh, a second most highly attended uh, webinar uh, after the, uh, um, which, which was even more highly attended than the ones I've talked about so far, was when we presented on, when Nick actually presented a full webinar, a one hour presentation actually on the mental health first aid. And it's, it's really significant. This is a, a big new piece of work that we are doing. Uh, and we feel it's extremely important as coaches. And the reason for that is the statistics are really um, pretty quite shocking actually, that one in five Australians experience a mental health illness of some kind every year. So these statistics come from Mental Health Australia uh, and also the government and a little bit of research on mental health actually in workplaces reveals some really startling statistics, um, statistics like this. So we believe it's really important that we understand the role that we can play as coaches to support people if they're experiencing mental health and we're meant to have mental illness. And, and we reflected on the fact, and I reflected in my blog post actually, that I have a number of clients who have mentioned something to me around uh, work, you know, working with um, anxiety, um, that they um, are suffering from depression and they're working with their doctors on that. So it's not, it's, it's, it's not particularly common for me, I would say, but there has been a number of times clients have shared with me over my, my coaching time that they've been experiencing a form of mental illness. So I, 
I wrote about this in my blog post that I always wondered, did I, did I do the right thing? Did I say the right thing? Or what is the right thing to do? And so mental health first aid training really allows us to be more comfortable in that space should a client or even not just our clients, but family members, friends, members of the community, people that we support in our many different roles we have, um, not just as coaches, but as as partners and wives and mothers and brothers and sisters and uncles and aunties and friends, you know, uh, the, the different roles we have, uh, how we can actually support people. So um, a very uh, important piece of work that we're doing, a very important piece of work that a lot of our clients um, are engaging in. And if you're interested in, excuse me, the mental health first aid training, you are very welcome to come and join us on programs next year. So we'll be doing a lot more work in this area as well. What we're thinking about here is the boundary between um, coaching and other support services, and also how do we support a person in our role as a coach, because we have created that uh, trusting, confidential relationship. We have been able to build rapport with clients so that they may feel comfortable to share with us. And how do we feel comfortable having the conversations that we need to, um, if we need to. Great, well, uh, our last um, highlight is it's, it's uh, a special announcement that I can make. Uh, I didn't present a webinar on this, but it's, it's a bit of a highlight that we have to finish off the year. And that is that we have recently, just this week, achieved re-accreditation of our coaching programs. So we're very excited to let everybody know that our Certificate for Workplace and Business Coaching and the Diploma of Workplace and Business Coaching have been re-accredited by the government uh, for another five years. So uh, most of I think there on the line have um, a part of our alumni or have done one of our programs, but you will know that these are nationally accredited programs with International Coach Federation accreditation as well. Um, it's, it's really fantastic um, to be able to let you know that we have been re-accredited. Uh, we'll be rolling out the new programs in the new year. We'll be talking to alumni about how they can upgrade. So there's lots of work that's going in to get us ready. Um, but it's a real pleasure and it's a lot of excitement um, for me to be able to make that announcement as well. So there you go. Um, the top 10 highlights for 2019. I did take a look at the slides from 2018 and I just think, wow, there's just so many, many different, so many topics that we cover, so many people that connect with me. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Every Friday we get together and uh, we share experiences, we create a community, we focus on our professional development. I really look forward to Fridays. Um, as you know, it's a great opportunity to connect with the, with the community, but it also, mean it's, it also means every time I do a coaching cafe, it's Friday, so it's the weekend. So I've always been excited to come on the line with you. Um, I'm always excited about the weekend as well. So um, it's my opportunity now to thank you on behalf of the team at Open Door Coaching. So thanks, thank you, you know, all for being a part of our coaching cafe. It's a part of our professional development that we do this. Uh, it's part of who we are as a company and how we like to add value to our alumni uh, and to the wider coaching community. And it's, it's such a pleasure for everyone to come on the line and to share their experience uh, as, 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 as we present different ideas. So thank you for making it really special for us as well. I wish you all a really happy, happy holiday period if you uh, are listening to this and uh, you're on holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all as well. Thank you for joining us. And I really look forward to um, a big new year in 2020 and a great new set of uh, coaching cafes for us to, uh, to dig into as well. So thank you to you all. Merry Christmas. And I look forward to catching up with you in the new year.